Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear and see me. We're really, really, really sorry. Um, we've had some technical problems this evening. I won't go into them because it's utterly boring. Anyway, we're here now and we've got some stuff to talk to you about. Um, it's a bit of a break since the last Revolution Trains Facebook Live. This one is number five. We've got five new samples to show you. We've also got news of an all new product and we've also got a few other things we want to show you. Mike Hale will be joining us later. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about the forthcoming uh, MTV ZKV Xander wagons. Uh, he's going to be showing you the cads of those. Um, we've also got a very special guest joining us to unveil our new product. He's an old friend um, of Revolution Trains with, uh, let's say, these new products. Um, the big news, I suppose, really is that this time of year we would all have been or be looking forward to the International Engage show Tings. For obvious reasons, that hasn't taken place uh, this year. And for that reason, we haven't been able to see you, talk to you, meet you, and show you what we've been up to. So we're using these um, Facebook Lives as an effort to engage uh, with you, with our uh, supporters, our customers, our friends, um, so that you can at least get a uh, handle on what we're doing. So um, what we're going to go through is we're going to go through the Engage um, IWA van and timber carrier EP1 samples. Uh, there's two of those. We've also got three samples in double O gauge for our four millimeter supporters, including the IPA twin flats, the IPA twin flats with stakes, and the IPA covered car carriers. All three of those car carriers, they're coming up. Um, We've also got some information, as I said, about the Engage Xander. We've got some information about the new product. And we've also got some deadlines to talk about, uh, which we'll come to all in good time. And of course, everything that you talk about uh, today will be updating on our website. And also, uh, we will be hopefully recording this and we're going to put it on our website for people to watch who weren't able to join us live and who might be uh, wondering what's going on. And hopefully, uh, Mike Hale will be joining us too uh, and he'll be able to answer questions as Revolution Trains uh, to anybody who's asking questions about what's going on. So here we go. Um, let's start off then with the IWA car carriers in Engage. So so uh, we're going to use our close-up camera to show you these. This is the uh, van version. There we have it. So this, these car carriers um, and the timber carriers that they were also developed from, we're all, we've already shown the EP samples of these in double O, and these are the N-gauge ones. Now, what's interesting about these is that they started life like this in the 1980s, and then around about 2006, around 40 were converted to this. But I'm gonna to talk to you about the vans first of all. And um, what you'll see is they've got two hand wheels on the ends there, and these two hand wheels uh, operate in tandem and allow the operators to lift the entire roof and slide it over that way. And that makes these vans incredibly useful because they can be loaded from the sides with a forklift or with an overhead crane because you can get right to the entire deck area in the sides. Now when introduced, they were, in, um, they were largely used for fertilizer. They were in a Norsk Hydro livery. And we're gonna be doing that version, uh, the Norsk Hydro livery, uh, still. Uh, we're going to be doing the Norsk Hydro liveried version. Uh, there we go. You can see it there. That's um, one. The first. That, that, that's how they first arrived. Some also appeared in cargo wagon livery, um, which uh, again is uh, and that, and are still some are still running around in that livery now. Some are in unpainted uh, aluminium. We're offering that version too. But as you can see there, um, these wagons are so useful that as well as being used for paper, mineral water. Um, steel and fertilizer they're still in use operating between Ditton in northwest England and Nievenheim in Germany carrying aluminium and often as you can see they're hauled by class 92s currently more usually class 66s um, but still in use even now as for the timber carriers well um, they uh, were converted in 2006 they're predominantly operated by Colas rail as uh, you could see and um, they operate radiated out of Chirk, where the large chronospan paperworks is, and they bring in timber, or they have brought in timber from Scotland, um, from the north of England, from South Wales, and from Southwest England as well. So again, those timber carriers. Uh, the full lineup that we are offering uh, is the Norsk Hydro, the cargo wagon, and the unbranded vans, and also the uh, blue uh, two-axe liveried timber carriers. Now, all those are available to order now. And obviously the next stage for those, as with the, the four millimeter models that we showed off before, will be uh, decorated samples. 
Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next thing, which is something for double O modelers, and that is the uh, car carriers that we're doing. Now, again, I'm going to show you these uh, on the desk in front of me here, if the close-up camera works, and it's partly the close-up camera that was causing us our difficulties before. So here we go. This is the uh, this is the twin. Uh, if I can get it centered in the frame there. There we go. So as you can see, this has lots of similar features to our engage models. It has kinematic um, couplers at each end in standard NEM pockets. In the center, we've uh, designed a, a fixed coupler there that just clicks in. It's fully flexible with the kinematic couplers, so it can't. There's no buffer lock going to happen there. With a photo etched. Um, tread plate that goes across the top because when these are loaded in real life vehicles are simply driven onto them and driven along them uh, to get them fully loaded so the versions we're doing is this is the the original um, TDT 452 uh, plane flat uh, there's also going to be uh, as an experiment some uh, were fitted with side stakes to allow a canvas to be stretched across them and the, the side the canvas was intended to um, deter people from throwing stones and things um, so there's the version there with side stakes and then finally uh, when that didn't work uh, they decided to start fitting uh, increasing numbers of them with um, covers and side screens and also um, roofs as well so this is the the covered version and these uh, exist in both twin and in quad form we're offering these as well to uh, four millimeter modelers both as twins and quads so uh, the twin versions will come uh, as this is with a the center um, fixed coupler and then standard um, tension lock couplers on the outer edges uh, the quad sets will be supplied with an additional coupler that is slightly longer because of course you do have the buffers between the two inner vehicles and that's that's prototypical that's how the prototypes are so we've got the um, the quad sets we've got the covered versions and we've got the twins with stakes and without stakes now just to give you a sense of how these operate these vehicles uh, I can, we can show you this photo uh, taken at land of any uh, by Alan Williams. It shows a nice mixed train, all different types mixed up there. So there's no reason if you to just buy one type or just buy a single type. Um, however, the quad versions do often work in uh, block trains on their own, as this uh, photo by Jonathan Lewis will show of a Class 90 um, on an Anglo-Scottish train. Again, uh, you can see a quad set just behind the locomotive there. And often the quad sets, because they provide enhanced uh, protection are used for high value vehicles things like Jaguars SUVs that kind of thing so the full lineup of what we're offering is the flat versions in both the original uh, pale grey STVA livery and the slightly newer red uh, tomato red STVA livery um, we're also offering again the, the flat version with the stakes again original pale STVA grey from about the early 1990s the red came in I think around about 2002 2003 from memory uh, and then finally, of course, there's the twin set. Now, there are a, a small number of uh, covered uh, uh, carriers that operate in twin sets like this, but the majority of the covered ones are permanently marshaled into sets of four, into quad sets. And again, we're offering the quad sets in the red, uh, the original pale grey, and also they have started in this year, 2020, repainting some of them into a new livery, a Group Cat dark blue livery. And again, that version will also be available uh, to order. And that version is available, those are all available to order now on our website. Uh, the next stage for these models is we're going to go and test them. And then assuming that the running is okay, and certainly the running of the N-Gage samples is exemplary, then we will be looking at decorated samples and getting these models into production. So that's the update on those. Now we're going to move back to Engage, and with news of a brand new product, here is um, uh, Fife's finest, Mr. Aaron Aird of Sea Rail Intermodal. Good evening, welcome to the Sea Rail part of the show. It's customary at this time of year that Sea Rail and Revolution release a new container, and this year's container is 40 foot high cube reefers. Uh, we've done six liveries. Hamburg Sud, P&O, Merceyland, Yang Ming, Hapag Lloyd and Feist Bananas. Um, as a container design, in real life I've been about for about 20-25 years in this guys. Uh, used by all shipping companies throughout the world. Um, the initial releases of the same door ends and sides. It's a shrunk down version of the double O gauge model. Um, We've gone for two different reefers in the end this time. We've got the Dakin and the Fermakine. The Fermakine is a new one that I didn't have within the range from Double O. Uh, 
you know, a distinctive V-shape. Some of the companies like Hapag Lloyd paint their own, the company colours, hence the distinctive orange, it's theirs. Uh, you've got company logos on the ends of some of them. Yeah, you've got your Yang Ming, it's got the logos, the height restrictions. Yeah, if you go to the doors, got the company logos. I've printed as much on the doors as is feasibly possible in Engage. I mean, I think they've come out excellent. I mean, if you go to the, the P&O, which they do sit snugly on the Revolution KFA, they have, I mean, that container was painted a duck egg blue. Although for the purposes of Engage, we did lighten it slightly because the, the initial livery looked a bit dark. Uh, but that has a Dakin reefer unit, which is painted just the customary white. And you've got Hamburg Sud, which is sat in the, the C-Rail pocket wagon. Yet again with the logos. All the reefers have a, an etch over the fan. So beneath there, there's the detail of the fan. You can actually see it if you care to look with a, with a microscope, basically. It might have been a step too far, but we think it's worth doing. But yet again, all the roof printings are there. Same on the ends, same on the doors. All the hinges are pinted out and picked out in silver, as are the locking bars. I mean, so you do see trains on the network that are running with about, oh, you know, you get them 10, 20 of them at a time. You know, you often see them, you know, depending on what companies run for what ports. But, you know, I've seen quite a few on some trains running up the West Coast main line. Uh, the prices of these will be £9. They'll be for immediate sale. We'll have them in stock now. More liveries will be forthcoming in years to come. I don't know what else to say. Thank you very much and good night. Okay, well, thanks very much indeed, Aaron. Um, you know, you'll know that we've been doing C -Rail, uh, containers with C Rail, and we usually have a new one out every year at Tings. And this is what was going to be out at Tings, we thought, but of course. Uh, Ting's got cancelled, but we still pushed ahead with these reefers. I think they're going to be really useful. And let me just show you one image um, that uh, we, we've been sent by Tim Moran, which shows a whole bunch of reefers behind um, a couple of uh, new liveried Freightliner Class 90s. So um, totally up to the minute. But of course, these reefers, particularly the P&O ones, have been in service for, for quite a few years. Um, more information about those on our website. And you can order them now. The, um, the, 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 the buy page will go live uh, once. So Mike presses the button and so you can order those now and they'll be delivered as soon as we can of course at the moment we are also working really hard to send out the uh, KUA uh, twin uh, bogey or quad bogey nuclear flask wagons in twin sets and also the IPA car, car carriers in Engage which have been hopefully arriving on people's doormats over the last week or so um, so again thanks again to Aaron as well for a great debut performance on a Facebook uh, uh, revolution trains live um, good man I particularly enjoyed enjoyed his banana accessory at the start and I'm sure you did too. Um, okay so what we're going to do now, what I'm going to do now is give you a, a rundown of all the things that are in production because one thing that we've noticed a common thread is every time we do a live or we publish something on our website or anything we get an immediate um, array of questions from people saying yeah but what about so and so, what about so and so, what about so and so. So in an effort to stave that off I'm going to run through all the projects we've got even when there's very little news just to let you know that we haven't forgotten about them. So. Class 92s. Okay, the Class 92s in Engage, they are nearing completion. I know we've said that before and we've thought it before, but what Rapido trains have told us is that they're at the stage now where the uh, sound decoders are being fitted to those models for customers who ordered DCC sound locomotives. Once that's done, they will be ready to ship and we are hoping that they'll be ready to ship uh, in the middle of October, which is probably only a couple of weeks away now. So we're really, really confident, or at least Rapido are really, really confident that they are close to uh, hitting the... Uh, the containers now and getting in getting over sent over here and just presumably once they're shipped it'll just be a few weeks before they arrive and we can get them onto your layout so you can start running them it's been a long long journey but hopefully the final result will be worth it class 128 uh, diesel parcels unit well again that's quite a complicated model although um, there are only uh, I think a half a, a dozen of them or so um, there are two different types some with center gangways and split head codes uh, which we're about to show you 
and then other ones uh, so this one if you look at that it's got a gangway and it's got um, lights so just little lights either side of the gangway they were originally um, head codes uh, also some of them had the gangways removed and were left completely flush and there's another type which we're also about to show you which has a center head code and always had a center window there so there's quite a lot going on there and even where they uh, removed um, the, the head codes and then put in marker lights sometimes they use seven rivets uh, around the box sometimes six rivets there's so many little detail differences that we're really having to drill down into to get these right and um, obviously you know being revolution trains uh, we want to get them right so the CAD work on that has taken longer than we thought but we're nearly there with that and as soon as the CAD work is completed we will be ready to start tooling and hopefully maybe by the time of the next but one live we'll have EP1 samples of those to show you as well other projects class 313s again the cad is progressing you might think they're a simple shape i think we probably thought they were a simple shape when we started but when you start looking at them they're quite subtle uh, lots of angles and corners and um, we need to get those right and lots of course of underframe detailing as well all the little boxes again they all need designing and producing um, caroline in n and double o that's the uh, southern region general manager saloon um, again, uh, recently actually, Caroline's been out and about on the main line, as many people would have seen, um, but not pulled by the usual DRS traction, but in fact being pulled by um, a Colas Class 37, looking rather rather nice, the green coach with the orange and yellow locomotive. The Colas locomotive on higher to DRS, the DRS still has the uh, contract to provide traction for uh, Caroline. Um, that photograph is courtesy of Simon Cartledge Swain, so many thanks Simon for letting us use that. Um, at the moment, uh, again, the 00 CAD is just about finished, and as soon as it is finished, uh, we'll let you all know that, and as soon as it is finished, then work will start on the N-Gage CAD, but the N-Gage CAD will be a little bit simpler because it's a smaller scale, and because having already done it in double O, shrinking it down won't nearly be uh, as complicated as starting from scratch. And some of you might also have seen uh, the first of our series of articles in Railway Modeler about Caroline detailing the history of this particular vehicle. Well, there is going to be another um, installment of that short series coming up, I think, in the December issue of Railway Modeler, uh, and that will have a lot more about how we develop the model, how we turn you know, our research into an actual uh, 3D uh, product. So uh, look out for that um, if you are uh, interested. Other projects where well, there's the 56XX steam locomotive. Now this is being produced by Sonic and uh, as you'll know if you ordered from us before the deadline then we will supply you with your 56XXs but everyone else uh, can still order all types from Rails of Sheffield and Rails have also commissioned I think six or seven exclusive versions. Now we did detail those in I think Facebook Live number two but um, they include um, liveries that we didn't offer such as the uh, GWR uh, oblique grotesque livery which was the, the lower image that you just saw uh, and also for example BR Black but with British Railways on the uh, the side of the tank instead of the um, the early L emblem or indeed uh, the late crest. So uh, the 56 XXs we, we think they are going to be ready to ship by November so fingers crossed there they should be coming and they should be good. And just one last thing some of the photographs have shown uh, the wheels being unpainted in fact the wheel faces of these locomotives will be painted black they won't be left in just unpainted um, blackened nickel silver as uh, the samples in the photographs there. Uh, last product that we'd, uh, we I want to bring you up to date with is the class 320 and 321s. Well you may have seen on our website the class 320 uh, Scott Rail sample looking absolutely fabulous. Uh, these models are all now ready we've closed the order book on them and the, the they are going to be going into production literally any day now and we are hopeful that we can get them out of the factory before Chinese New Year. Now those of us um, who deal with China, those of you who follow our progress and follow the, the sort of progress of model production will know that every year, um, just after um, our New Year, uh, there is Chinese New Year. It's a massive, massive festival in China and pretty much the whole country and certainly whole pro production of the country shuts down for about a month. So uh, this year, Chinese New Year is February the 12th and we are hoping that we can get the class 320s and 321s out of the factory before the Chinese New Year shut down. We'll keep you up to speed with that as we get nearer and nearer that deadline. Okay, so that's um, that's enough of all the ongoing products that uh, I'm going to put in that section. There's a, a bit, little bit more information to come, and with more information about our forthcoming um, class A tankers and first of all um, MTV and ZKV Zander wagons. Here's Mike Hale. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to tell you a bit more about our forthcoming MTV stroke ZKVs and uh, uh, aggregate wagons. 
Um, there were 150 of these aggregate wagons uh, built by Standard Wagon Works in 1975 on redundant 35-tonne tank chassis. They were initially used for stone and sand traffic uh, and then later on uh, they were used for salt, iron slab and scrap. During the mid to late 80s they started to be moved into departmental use uh, and all were taken out of revenue service by 1990. Um, however, they carried on in departmental use uh, well into the late 90s. Uh, some even had full repaints into uh, the, the Dutch grey-yellow uh, departmental livery uh, and, and a few even made it uh, into uh, privatisation branding uh, with uh, the sort of pre-privatisation mainline uh, company uh, branding. We're going to offer uh, three different liveries, uh, which were the liveries that they carried throughout their lives, um, with a lot of variation in the markings for the different uses that I've just talked about. Uh, the original freight brown, uh, the first departmental use, which was uh, essentially the original freight brown, but with a yellow stripe around the lip of the wagon um, to indicate that it was uh, marked for departmental use. Uh, and then ultimately uh, the full repaint, as I mentioned, into uh, Dutch Civil Engineers Grey Yellow. We're going to offer these in a variety of different packs uh, with a selection of different markings that are appropriate for the different uses. Uh, like the real thing, our models will use the chassis from our previous model of the 35 tonne uh, Class B uh, tank. And speaking of the, the 35 tonne tanks, we finalised uh, the liveries that we're going to offer the Class A weed killer tanks in. Uh, we've done quite a bit more research uh, where possible. Um, it's actually quite difficult to find uh, sufficient information and pictures of uh, the tanks in the various liveries. Um, so what we've decided to offer is two pairs of, of weed killer tanks. Uh, one pair in uh, green chipman's livery uh, and a second pair in uh, a plainer black livery uh, that covers the later period of their use. Um, this covers much of the life of the weed killer tanks from the 70s through to the 80s. We're aware that there are a couple of other liveries, uh, a red chipman's livery and a yellow eastern region uh, weed killer train livery. Um, we're not going to do those in these runs, unfortunately, um, but we will consider them for future runs uh, of the tanks. Um, as I say, we'll be producing those in pairs. Um, if you want to run uh, a full set for a weed killer train, you'll actually need two pairs of each livery um, because the, the, the uh, weed killer trains typically had uh, four tanks at any one time. So they would all be um, the same livery for, for each train, so uh, four green or four black. Um, that's all I've really got to say to you. Thanks. Well, okay. Thanks very much indeed for that, Mike. Um, I've got to say, I think the um, the Zander box wagons are going to be so useful for people modelling the 1970s and 1980s, and uh, hopefully the um, the Chipman's weed killer tanks will be a uh, It'll be good fun for people as well. Um, okay, so now a couple of deadlines coming up. Uh, one of them is tomorrow. Tomorrow, September the 30th, that's the deadline for expressing an interest if you want uh, one of the new run of Class 390 Pendolinos. Now, we'd like to do uh, the Flowing Silk livery. We'd like to do the uh, DFT Ghost livery. We'd certainly like to do the fantastic Avanti uh, livery. Uh, but we can only do them if we believe that there is sufficient demand for them. Now, at the moment, it's looking like there is definite interest, but I wouldn't say that there is clearly demand among Engage enthusiasts for these models. So please, please, we're not asking for any money. We don't want any commitment, even if you express interest. We're not going to hold you to it. But please just let us know. If you are interested, if you think you'd buy one, think you'd buy two, uh, go to our website. There is a page there. Uh, if you go down on our news section uh, to the thing that was published on Sunday, I think, that shows where the... Um, uh, where the, the form is, you can click on it. There's a form where you can express interest. Let us know exactly what you'd want. And then over the coming days, we'll take a view on whether uh, we can actually proceed with these or not. Uh, we'd really love to do them. But of course, 
we can only do that with your support. Another deadline at the end of October, so at the end of next month on these um, fantastic um, uh, PCV Semplo, Semflow wagons. Now these are the ones that we're uh, having produced for us by um, our friends at AccuraScale. Um, there are two versions. This is the first version. This is the um, early version with the blue circle uh, plaque on the side. And then later on the plaques were removed. So you just got the sort of the, um, uh, the, 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 the things on the side which held the plaque. And uh, these had the tops markings rather than the original uh, lettering. Now we're doing um, triple packs of these and we're doing uh, at least uh, I think three of this one and four of this one. So you can build up the long trains with prototypically different numbers on all the wagons that you've got. Um, the price at the moment is £79.50 for the triple pack, which we think represents great value uh, in the current climate. At the end of October, this is going to go up to the final pre-order price of £86.85. So get your order in before the end of October and you'll save yourself quite a lot of money. Um, and that's when these are going into production. So these are going into production fairly soon as well. And we are hoping to again have them uh, early next year. Can't say exactly when, but we will obviously let you know as soon as we know when they are due to arrive. Um, very nice wagons, again, aimed at the trad transition era modeler. Uh, you could run these behind a, a 9F steam locomotive or a pair of class 33s in green uh, or whatever. So again, a useful model. Now the final deadline I've got for you again, and I will just move this model in and show you, is for the uh, N-Gage EcoFret container flats. Here we go. Um, now I've got the one of our containers on there. Obviously, that's just um, stuck in position. Um, the these container flats they operate in twins in VTG's green livery operated by Freightliner, and as triples as in the um, GBRF blue livery that you can see here, and also in DB red livery. Uh, there are some running around. So uh, these are very useful wagons. Uh, they're the thing about them is they've got a shorter deck than most container flats, so you can fit more 40 foot boxes on any given length of train because there are so many more 40 foot boxes now than any other length in operation. Uh, so these ones, the N-Gage ones, are going to be going into production probably after the end of November, which is when we think we'll be closing the order book. Um, the 00 ones, again, because we are doing these models in 00 as well, uh, I'll just show you the, the centre car of the 00 model to give you a sense of how much bigger it is. So again, the, the 00 models will be also going into production, but not just yet. Uh, they need a little bit longer before they will be ready to go into production. But again, all of these models can be ordered, both in 4mm and N-Gage. Please order now, because again, uh, the price now is the early price uh, is the cheap price um, once they've been produced the price will go up as it does on all our stuff because that's when you get to the retail price with the retail margin built in um, a few other bits and bobs uh, before we go uh, the APTE in N, um, again, it's something that we've been looking to uh, do. We've got plenty of expressions of interest. We've talked to Rapido about it. We are literally waiting for them to decide how mechanically feasible it is to both transmit power through the train and tilt. And once they've done a bit of work on the engineering side of it, then hopefully that project can go ahead. We know there are lots of people after that model. We've certainly got no problem there with the expressions of interest, lots of interest. So uh, we are really keen to process that one or proceed see or put, get that one going hopefully in 2021. Uh, class 89 um, again enough expressions of interest we think to make it work but we do need to talk to manufacturers about exactly how it's going to uh, be made um, and and what figures they can give us in terms of how much it will charge because of course we're not going to be ordering very many these the APT and the class 89 are, are a fascinating uh, amazing railway vehicles but they're quite niche. Um, You'll know that if we can make them happen, we will make them happen, and we will let you know every step of the way exactly what's happening on those. Um, one question I've just noticed with the containers is, uh, do the reefers fit on all manu manufacturers for, uh, container flats? Well, they certainly fit on uh, sea rails, uh, pocket wagons and our uh, KFA container flats and our uh, eco frets. Um, as for other manufacturers, other manufacturers use different ways of securing containers to their wagons. Um, they have very small pips in each corner of the containers. Uh, they're designed to fit on, uh, they do fit on um, I think Farish uh, in uh, mega uh, multi frets um, and I think they probably fit also on the DAPOL uh, FEABs but um, they, they are the right scale the right size uh, you might need to um, jiggle around with the pegs to make sure they actually go in because the DAPOL containers have much bigger pegs so the holes on the DAPOL contain the flats are also bigger. A um, couple of other things um, the first Sonic models double O model 
uh, will be here very soon in EP1 format. We haven't announced what it is yet. Um, when we do, it'll go on our website and we will tell you what it is going to be. This is a 004 millimeter scale powered model from Sonic Models. Uh, it's his entry into the four millimeter market and you'll be seeing that fairly soon, we believe. Um, we're also going to be announcing a new Sonic Models N-Gage model, a new locomotive. Again, uh, we're not saying what it is tonight uh, because we've decided that we're going to wait until the uh, 56XXs have arrived. So they should be arriving, uh, we think, towards the end of next month. And so once they do arrive, then we will be revealing uh, what the next Sonic model uh, uh, locomotive is going to be. Um, any other questions at all? I th hopefully Mike has been answering questions as we've been proceeding with this. Um, apologies again for the technical glitches. We should have started at um, 7.30. Um, sadly, we couldn't, but we got there in the end. Um, we're going to try and get all these glitches sorted out, so next time it's a lot smoother and a lot slicker. Um, any other questions? I will be checking in later on to the Engage forum. There is a thread on the uh, Revolution Trains Facebook Lives, so we'll be um, updating. And Any questions that you didn't have time to ask just now, we'll be trying to answer then. Uh, keep an eye on our website and um, Thanks very much indeed to everybody for your continued support. We really, really, really do appreciate it. It gives us enormous pleasure to uh, bring these models to market. Um, I've seen photographs on Facebook and uh, elsewhere of people running the uh, IPA car carriers that we've been sending out in the last couple of weeks and the KUA uh, nuclear flask wagons. They look fantastic and it gives us such a buzz to see people enjoying them. So feel free to send us photos of these models operating on your layout. We'll bung them maybe on our website. Um, and just keep on enjoying your modeling, keep on enjoying Revolution Trains products and products from other manufacturers too, they're all good. And we'll see you again soon. And thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thanks also to Aaron for taking part this time.